Here's something many people don't understand about tax planning as they head towards retirement. Optimizing your taxes doesn't always mean paying less taxes this year. It's counterintuitive, but sometimes the strategy that will save you the most taxes over time requires you to pay a little bit more now. That was the story for the couple I'll tell you about in just a bit. They saved over $186,000 by switching their tax thinking from short-term to long-term. Hey, I'm Steve Willems. I'm a wealth advisor with the Willems Wealth Planning Group out here in BC. And in this video, I'll explain to you how you could potentially save thousands in taxes over your lifetime, why focusing on this year's tax bill might not be the best play, and how to make the tax system work for you in the long game. I'll also show you a sample case of a couple who we helped run these numbers so you can see if this might make sense for your situation. All right, let's dive into what I mean by tax optimization, especially from a Canadian standpoint. You see, tax optimization is all about making your financial moves in a way that legally minimizes your tax bill over time. It's not just about looking at your tax return this year and thinking, do I pay less tax right now? Instead, it's thinking about the long game. It's like chess, not checkers. In Canada, our tax system has several layers depending on your situation. It might be corporate, personal, federal, provincial. And so understanding how to navigate these things can really work to your advantage over the long term. Within those different layers, you also have different tools at your disposal. TFSAs, RSPs, income splitting opportunities, trusts, corporate structures, all designed to give you more control over your tax situation. But here's the key. It's not about trying to use all of those tools like a bingo sheet, trying to use all five. It's about knowing when and how to use them effectively. You want to think of them as tools to solve a tax problem. And that's where the real magic of long-term planning comes in. See, many folks we see, they get caught up in the idea of cutting down their tax bill for the current year. Feels good to save a bunch of money right now, right? But here's the catch. This approach can sometimes be like stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. Short-term tax savings might look appealing up front, but it can lead you into a trap where you end up paying more in taxes over the long haul, often even without knowing you're making a trade-off in the moment. A common scenario we see is people maxing out their RSP contributions for the year, even if their income isn't particularly high. It's just the default strategy, what y'all have always done. But without a long-term view, these moves can push you into a higher tax bracket in future years, especially during retirement, when your income sources, they might be changing. It's like painting yourself into a corner. You're going to save a little bit now, but you're going to be limiting your moves down the road. Now, another common scenario is with higher income folks who haven't yet maxed out their tax-free savings accounts. Now, if this is you, say you're a high earning professional and you earn money inside your professional corporation, typically you don't have a TFSA. And it's not because you don't know about it or you don't know how it works, you don't understand it. It's just because you don't want to give up the tax deduction today to allocate your precious after-tax dollars, often taxed at more than 50%, into a tax-free savings account. So if this is you, I mean, adding to your TFSA, it comes at a real and immediate cost. Just to show you the point, if you make $250,000 this year and you contributed the max $30,000, let's say, to your RSP for the year, that move saved you $17,453 of tax. Makes sense. Decent move. The thinking is that surely you'll be able to extract that money out in retirement at a rate of tax that's lower than the amount that you put it in. Now that leaves those TFSA accounts often empty, underutilized, and poorly allocated. Now, both of these examples, they show short-term thinking. And in a given year, it may not seem like that big of a deal. But when we do proper planning work with folks, we see it's actually a much bigger deal than they think. So let's walk through a quick case study to see how this plays out if we instead attempt to make better tax decisions that are rooted with a long-term view. Let me introduce you to Bam Bam and Pebbles. Uh, Bam Bam is 55. He works at the quarry. He makes about $75,000 a year. Pebbles, she's also 55, and she's working at the School of Hard Rock, making about $45,000 a year. They're both diligent savers and investors. They've got $900,000 combined in their RRSPs. Let's say their home is valued at $750,000, and they only have, let's say, $25,000 left on their mortgage. 
Now they live off around $75,000 a year in after-tax lifestyle spending. They are spending a little bit more every year due to inflation. They want to keep that spending value maintained as they head into retirement. They don't want to take a spending haircut when they retire. Makes sense. As they had one year left on their mortgage, they're now wondering what to do with their free cash flow once it's paid off. From a tax perspective, let's just choose to keep this really, really simple. Let's say in scenario A, they start to save their free cash flow into Bam Bam's RSP. And let's say they're going to do that at around $15,000 a year. They both retire at the end of the year that they turn 64. They take their CPP and OAS at age 65. And then they're going to start drawing from their RSPs immediately. They're going to convert them to RIFs and they're going to draw enough income to maintain their spending. At that point on paper, if they've added up their net worth statement, they're worth about $2.556 million. When we run the projection for them by age 85, they're going to be worth about $3.27 million, of which $412,000 is in the TFSA and about $1.3 million is still in the RIFs. By age 95, they're projected to be worth $3.4 million, of which $872,000 is in their TFSAs, and they still have $552,000 in their RIFs. That's scenario A, pretty common. Along the way of making those RSP contributions, they got some short-term immediate tax savings as a result, which they certainly liked. Now in scenario B, instead of saving and investing in their RSPs, they're going to use their TFSAs instead. That's the one thing that we're going to change. We're not going to change anything else. They'll still spend the same. They'll still earn the same. All else equal. Just saving money into a different pot and then mapping out the tax consequences of that single decision. If we do that, at age 64, they're worth $2.554 million. At age 85, they're worth $3.36 million, of which six hundred and eighty grand is in the TFSA and $1.1 is in the RIF. By age 95, they're worth $3.6 million, of which $1.15 million is in the TFSA and about $474,000 is in their RIFs. Hey, now, before we compare those two scenarios, if you found this helpful, would you do me a favor? Could you hit that like button or consider subscribing to the channel? We've helped hundreds of families walk through this exact same road you're on and this story that we're going through right now. And so what we're doing here is just taking those experiences and we're bundling them into valuable little videos that we're going to be releasing every week. The goal is to help you think through your own retirement. Now, back to those scenarios. Let's look at which path was better. A, where they saved constantly into the RSPs after the mortgage was paid off, or if they just redirected that savings to the TFSA. All else equal. So when we look at the difference here between these two scenarios at their age 65, there's only projected to be about a $2,000 difference in their net worth on the basis of whether their savings is going to be into the RSP or the TFSA. It's really not that big a deal at all. However, if they both pass away tragically at the same time at age 65, there is a $99,000 tax savings to their estate based on this one single move. And that leaves their net estate value better off by about $96,000 as a result, if we flash forward to their life expectancy, let's say forward to age 85, and we look at which one's better off, the savings to the RSP or to the TFSA, all else equal, scenario A or scenario B, at that point, we're seeing a difference in their net worth of about $85,000, and that's towards the TFSA. Better that they had saved towards the TFSA versus the RSP. Even more importantly, though, it's showing that their estate tax has been improved by $101,000. Their estate would owe way less tax if they both passed at age 85 and they had reallocated their savings to the TFSA in those first five years before retirement. And because both their net worth is going to be higher and their estate tax is going to be lower, their net estate value is going to be $186,000 better. This is a significant improvement based on one single change that they made in the five years before they retired. This is why a well-designed financial plan is so important. It helps you make smarter decisions, ensuring you're not playing checkers against a government that's playing chess with you. But the lesson is this, don't get too obsessed with this year's tax bill as a measure of success. Choose to play a different game, play the long game. Sometimes it might make sense to pay an extra $5,000 of taxes this year if you avoid $50,000 over the next 10 years. If you'd like help developing a long-term tax strategy that will reduce your tax liability over the next decade, we can help. Every week we set aside a few hours to help folks who have their own questions 
and help them get their answers they're looking for. So if you'd like to grab one of those time slots, I'll put a link in the description below. I hope that helps you think through your own journey. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.